Today we're uh, running the Docklands uh, Liffey Challenge, which is 1720 yacht racing on the River Liffey. We're going to have uh, 10 boats competing in two sets of heats uh, to get into a final then for the actual Liffey Challenge trophy. The, the Docklands Liffey Challenge is an interesting race in that it is in the middle of a city. Normally when we yacht race around the Dublin Bay, you could have a, a mile long uh, race course and you could go off into the distance one way or the other, but here you're confined by the, the, the walls of the River Liffey, so it makes for more interesting and uh, high speed action on the water. So far the weather conditions are looking pretty good and we're very excited to see that the, the wind is here and it's in the right direction. We're expecting a good event because of that and that's the main thing that we need to have to make sure this is good racing. We're hoping to put on a good show for all the spectators who will be here to see the racing. So we'll see what happens. I've been here about three years in a row and uh, about every year it's lovely weather, it's a lovely place to be, it's right in the heart of the city and uh, I know a lot of people who actually sail on the boat so I do come back just to see them race and hopefully there'll be a bit of uh, drama at the marks and a lot of boats, you know, hoisting their sails very quickly all together at one time so it's nice to see that, see all the boats in action and uh, it's very exciting to watch. We're sponsoring uh, our own boat, Cooks Academy, and uh, that's the boat that I'll be up for today. So hopefully they'll win. This is the sixth annual Liffey Challenge. Uh, the race, uh, we started off uh, doing this event in the year 2000. Uh, I was actually living in the area and I was into uh, yacht racing and I thought it would be a nice idea to do some racing on the river. So I approached the Dublin Docklands Development Authority with the, with the view to doing that and they were very enthusiastic. So that's how it came about. Dublin Docklands Development Authority was set up in 1997 to continue the regeneration of the Docklands area. So, you know, a lot of what you'll see here standing on the river, you can see a lot of the development obviously along the north side of the river from the IFSC down to the north lots. But also a major part of that is all about regenerating public domain and also river regeneration. So in the public domain we've spent, um, we've invested quite a lot in things like uh, landscaping, the quaysides. So that you can now walk from the whole way from here at our offices all the way down to the Point Depot. And eventually we'll have two kilometres of public parkway all around the riverside. Dublin has traditionally turned its back on the river and what we want people to do is to turn around and start looking back at the river. So, you know, we have a lot of initiatives in place. Um, we have events like today, the Liffey Challenge, so that um, you know, it, it creates a bit of life and activity here and that, you know, people, there's something to watch. People love watching sailing. So, this is a, you know, it's an opportunity for people to come down and enjoy the river. One of the things that this, this event does is actually lets spectators get up close and personal with the actual yacht racing. I mean, literally some of the boats might be a foot or two away from the actual key walls where some people will be, will be actually watching the racing and could nearly touch the boats. This is very unusual for yacht racing because, as I say, it's, it's out in the, the middle of the ocean sometimes where no one can see it and no one can see what's going on. But here it's very obvious who's in the lead and who's not in the lead, so it's very easy to understand. A lot of the, our responsibility is trying to get these different boats down here so um, any event that takes place they have to get permissions obviously from ourselves and from Dublin Port so um, you know which obviously we're delighted to give some to see these activities here and um, also having the new moorings here has really really helped because we can accommodate more vessels for um, competitions like this. The boats we're uh, racing today are called 1720 uh, yachts. They're actually uh, about 10 years old in design and they originated in Cork. Uh, they're a very uh, uh, stripped out type of racing yacht as opposed to say some of the cruisers that you might see. So their whole uh, idea behind the boats is to make them as fast as possible. They're about 26 foot in length but they probably are equivalent in power to a, a 35 foot racing yacht. It's just ideal for this type of racing because they're very easy to, to maneuver, they're quick on the breeze, off the breeze, and they just, they like all kinds of conditions. 
it depends really on the uh, wind speed, what kind of speed you might get out of the boat. But these boats have been known to do up to 25 knots, which is quite substantial when you think, you know, it's a ton and a half of, of a racing machine going at that speed and there are no brakes. They'll take up to about five people to actually sail the boat, but they're quite handleable with make four or three crew even. And every person is uh, important to the running of the race. There's all kinds of jobs that need to be done from driving the boat to actually trimming the sails, pulling sails up, pulling them down, depending on what leg of the race course you're on. It's important to have very good trimmers so the people actually are pulling the sails and making them you know, work properly. So in this race especially where the wind can go up and down and we have a lot of uh, wind shifts with the uh, buildings around us, so the trimmers are, are vitally important and their feedback to the driver is absolutely uh, invaluable. The role the skipper takes on the boat is, is the ultimate, I mean it's responsible for all the crew and there's actually a legal implication there, but the skipper is the, is the person who takes responsibility for what goes on, communicates with all the crew what their roles are and what they expect from them for the day, so it's a crucial role really on the boat. You really have to have a crew that know what they're doing and they have to gel well together, work as a team really. It's very important that, that, that there's a good communication skills amongst the whole crew telling each other what's going on, what they're doing and what they need to do. Otherwise you're going to find yourselves in a bit of bother. I'm what's called the uh, Principal Race Officer or PRO. Um, my job is uh, to run the races. I decide on the length of the course, and that's, that's dependent on wind and how much time we have. Uh, and we, we do that by adjusting the, the, the distance between the two marks we race around. And then I, I'm responsible for firing off the sequence of guns and flags that signal to the guys that a race is coming. Uh, remember, on a boat there are no there are no brakes. Um, the only accelerator is the wind and sails. So we have we have a countdown system. So there's a line, an imaginary line across the river. I fire a gun or a hooter as it is in this case and I raise a flag which signals to the boat that in five minutes time they're allowed to begin the race. I then give them another warning at four minutes, another warning at one minute and finally I take down all the flags at zero which is the time they're allowed to cross the line in the direction of the race and off they go. So start time, very important part of the race. What you're trying to do is to uh, get yourself away nice and clean. It's kind of high adrenaline for the sailors. Each guy trying to get his nose out in front and establish a little bit of a lead that maybe he can then defend. You can just see Yoke crossing the rest of the fleet there on, uh, on what we call port tack, just clearing and uh, looking strong. competition consists of two flights uh, with five boats in each flight. There are three races also for each flight. The three boats with the best aggregate result from each flight go through to the final. The bottom two in each flight compete in a repechage. Here we're looking at Yoke, um, a winner from last year, one of the hot favourites to win again today. Here's the unusually named Two Fried Eggs, one of the newer boats in the fleet this year, owned and helmed by Liam Shanahan. Almost all the competitors today are amateur sailors, crews from all sorts of backgrounds, ages and abilities. And with an emphasis on skill in these boats uh, rather than strength, you'll find quite a lot of mixed crews as well. And uh, here's Business Gold. Oh dear, it looks like they've snagged a, a rope um, on the windward mark. Um, it's a shame because they were leading the race and very comfortably leading the race at the time. Of course, they've come to a complete stop. It does be a bit embarrassed, I'm sure, about that. Racing like this on the, on the Liffey is a real challenge for sailors. The race course is very narrow, two walls, one down each side. Uh, there's nowhere to go uh, once you reach the wall. Uh, we, don't, we don't like guys to hit the wall, obviously, so we put a great emphasis on safety. There's a real risk of 
collision or damage with, with six boats or five boats packed very closely into this narrow race course. So crews got to be alert all the time to, uh, to potential damage to other boats. This is a mark rounding here. There are four mark roundings in each of these races and it's a really crucial time of the race. It's a great opportunity to gain and of course then uh, to lose places. Um, we operate under a complex set of rules which apply at marks and sailors will always be trying to gain an advantage uh, as they approach the mark. So your, your, your track in and your track out are absolutely critical parts of the race. This is Michael Howell and his crew on board uh, Y2K. Flight 1, uh, Yoke, Business Gold and Randall Consultants came through in 1, 2 and 3. Uh, Atlantic, Canada Home and Y2K uh, sailed off in the repechage. All of the boats uh, sailing on the Liffey today are, are based in the Dublin region. Uh, the Southside boats come from Dunleary, the National Yacht Club, the Royal St George Yacht Club and the Royal Irish Yacht Club where the north side boats all come from Hoth. A 70 and 20 yacht can cost you anywhere from €8,000 to €30,000, depending on its age and condition. Uh, quite a few of the boats would be owned by a bunch of guys together, two, three, and even up to five uh, owners would all contribute. Uh, a number of the boats, as you can see, Key Events, Prem Group, Randall Consultants, Cook's Academy, Business Gold, they're all sponsored by local businesses. It's a great way to offset costs, and it's a very impressive billboard for a very small sponsor. Here we're looking at Prem Group, and owned by Peter Redden, pushing hard today, and it's being driven or helmed, as we call it in the business, by uh, uh, by Peter's son Simon. Uh, looks like a bunch of his friends that he's brought along to crew. With him. And here's the Hoot, uh, owned by Richard Stafford. Key events of the inside line, that's forced Cooks to go out wide, and that's an opportunity for the guys behind Cooks to maybe overtake. The 1720 is what we call a one design um, class. All the boats are the same. There's no opportunity within the rules to, uh, to optimize the boat uh, or any of its fittings. That makes it more economical for the sailors, but it also makes it a truer test of uh, cruisability. Here's Hoot, in this case the giveaway boat under the rules, ducking behind Prem Group, who's the right of way boat, and hence the uh, elaborate manoeuvre. Looking at key events here, being uh, helmed by Cathy McAlevey, who represented Ireland in the 1988 uh, Olympic Games in Seoul. She's got her son crew for her today too. Here's two fried eggs rounding the mark in the lead, um, followed by Prem Group hoisting their spinnaker. Nice hoist there, right on the mark. Excellent stuff. Cooks Academy key events and Prem Group emerges one, two, three, and uh, two fried eggs and Hoot went on into the repertoire. Some of the boats have pretty interesting names. Uh, anybody's guess where, where, where they've arrived from. Two fried eggs is reputed to have originated over a breakfast table argument. The city centre is 
proven to be a, an absolutely perfect place to hold this event over the years. You know, most cities, and Dublin is no exception, have a microclimate. The wind blows up the river from the east on warm sunny days, or the prevailing wind blows down the river from the west. Uh, of course, there's all the heat generated by the city, its traffic and its people, and the funneling effect of the buildings in the valley. Um, just to augment that, so we've always had sufficient wind to complete our event. This is the start of the final, and uh, the, the usual pre-start manoeuvres taking place here now as, as each boat jockeys for the best position uh, to give them maximum leverage off the start line. So this is a really tense time for those guys now uh, as, they, as they prepare for the, for the final start of the day. A lot of adrenaline pumping right now. There's Dan O'Neill and Davey Ryan on Business Gold, which I believe they borrowed for the day. Mick Libby is, uh, is driving the boat for them. Mick is currently in training to break the record for solo sailing around Ireland, which he hopes to do next month. Here we're looking at Yoke, who's pulled out a really strong lead. Uh, they're heading downwind, so they've got their spinnaker up, and the rest of the boats are still on their way up to the wind of mark. There's a sloppy spinnaker hoist from Cook's Academy with the, along the sail to go into the water. No prizes for that one, chaps. Sailing is kind of an unusual sport in, in that it's, 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 it's the marriage of the man and his machine uh, battling the elements or, or trying to get the better of the elements and then throw in other boats trying to do the same thing and you've got competitive racing. It's a highly addictive sport, um, probably really best encapsulated by the Irish Sailing Association's slogan, um, sailing the sport for life, because it is possible to be competitive from age to about 80 to age to about 80, um, just depending on the boat you race. Sailing's had a reputation as a sport that's difficult to get involved in, but really that's very far from the truth. Um, most of the boats, like the 1720s or other big boats, need lots and lots of people to crew on them, so owners of boats are always uh, looking for people to help them out. A good place to start is one of the many clubs dotted um, around the country. Then if you want to go a more formal route, there are plenty of recommended teaching establishments which you can find on the Irish Sailing Association's website, and they'll offer all sorts of courses from uh, beginning cruising to offshore um, sailing and passage work. And here we are on the last leg of the final. It's Yoke in the lead, followed in second place by Cook's Academy. There'll be no happy campers on the Cook's Academy tonight after being tipped to the post by Yoke, especially having had the lead in the bag at one stage. Yoke, a deserving winner. It was a really close final. Um, the wind was very patchy, probably at its most patchy for the final and I had lengthened out the race course. So quite a long, uh, long course, relatively speaking. Yoke uh, established a nice lead on the first leg, and was well, well ahead on the second leg, and ran out of wind. And was caught, rolled, and was at one stage back into fourth place of the six boats. But fought back well, and I thought uh, a well-deserved win. Close enough from, uh, from Cook's Academy, who, uh, who, who also sailed very well. Interesting that uh, Yoke won their flight, and Cook's Academy won their flight. So I think that, that it was probably quite a fair final in the end, and to see the two winners of the two flights fighting it out in the final was just about right.
It's very hard, and uh, we did. It. We had a round robin to start, and then we had a final. And uh, the the heat gave you an impression as to what it was going to be like racing in terms of you know figuring out where the wind was going to go. But in the final, it was very close, and we weren't leading by any means. We we led in the beginning, but then another boat. Uh, the Cooks Academy got well past us and they were well ahead right up until the last mark where they ran out of wind very kindly, thank you God and uh, we managed to get just inside them and literally beat them over the line by just the front end of the boat so very very close racing uh, We were up <laughs> Not to put too fine a point on it No, we just we got unlucky um, there was more wind on one side than there was on the other, and unfortunately we were on the wrong side, um, which was tough luck. But there's also there's an old racing tradition that you never mention the W word, which is win, when you're in the lead. And I thought I heard somebody mention it on the boat, um, so that may have had something to do with it. Uh, well, my boat won last year. I was away. It was being held by a different chap with the same boat with a different uh, group of people. Uh, so, yeah, the boat's won two years in a row. But it's the first time I've won it in six years of trying, so I'm delighted with that. You know, I was kind of thinking of selling my boat at some stage, but I won't be doing that now. I'm coming back next year. I want that trophy. <laughs> Conditions were fabulous for sailing. Probably uh, talking to the race officer, Gareth Connolly, was saying, in the six years we've been here, this is probably the best racing we've had uh, in all six years in terms of the wind. It must be all the building we're on the river, I think. They're putting so many buildings up either side now that uh, the wind just gets funneled down the middle. But it bounces off the buildings from side to side, so you're always trying to figure which bounce is coming next and where should I go for the next bit of wind. So it's a very exciting sailing. was uh, interesting in that the wind with speed was up and down quite a lot so you know you you were going along lovely for one minute and then the wind was die so you really had to be on your toes uh, when you're actually sailing the boat if you took your eye off the ball for one minute you could be out the back door no problem um, but you know that's the way it goes and we enjoy it no matter what There's always near misses in the river here because you've only got you've got a wall either side of you. So the, the plan is to head for the wall, and then when you get within a foot a foot or two of it, you uh, turn to your nearest boat and say, "I want room here to tack or jibe or whatever you're doing." And they have to give you room. So, but it means that all the boats are always manoeuvring in very tight conditions. There were a few bumper car moments, all right. Yes, um, a few connections. Uh, I did find at one stage that the boat behind me was uh, somehow in my boat and uh, nearly about to wipe out my back stay. Following that, we actually then bumped another boat in front of us. So, uh, yes, there was a few lively moments, you might say, on the race course today. <laughs> this is the first time I came down to watch the Liffey Challenge. A couple of friends of mine told me about it, and they, they sail. So, I mean, I've, I've kind of had a, a sort of sometime interest in it for a few years. So this is the first time I, I actually got to see it in action in Dublin. Uh, the event definitely surpassed my expectations because, I mean, the weather was a little bit cloudy, but the, the sails just kind of brought the river to life. Like, you kind of look at the Liffey and you think, dirty, turgid river, but the, uh, the boats just brought it to life. It was absolutely fantastic spectacle. This is the sixth year now, um, and I've done all six. Uh, this has been the most fun to, to watch. event we do in the whole year and that includes you know major overseas events and that sort of thing but uh, to sail in your home city in the middle of town in a river with uh, your friends and people you sail with all the time in very close to, uh, racing conditions is uh, fantastic and the, the Docklands Authority have given us a, uh, an opportunity to do something that we would have never had a chance to do before until they sort of established this facility in the river here so it's really made for a great event each year. I think the thing that made today so special was it's just that it brings an area of Dublin to life that sort of traditionally 
looked down upon by its, by its residents. It just kind of brought the Liffey to life, which was absolutely beautiful. To see that amount of colour and activity on the river was just fantastic. Thank you.